In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use user-driven parameters within Fusion 360 to make your 3D printed life a whole lot easier. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Now, I've done a whole range of tutorials in Fusion 360 for beginners, which I call CAD for newbies and you can find the playlist here. But this video, I will be honest, is more of an advanced tutorial. And it's not even really a tutorial because I'm still learning how to use parameters. But I wanted to show you how I've been using them to inform my designs. For example, this uh, 15 piece sliding puzzle I recently showed on the channel. I heavily used user driven parameters to inform the actual design of this. And I have a whole video as part of this file here. It is paid, but I go exactly through step by step how I designed this. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about user driven parameters so you can actually give them a shot in your models. So to understand what I'm talking about, we need to establish the CAD software we're using. Fusion 360 is a parametric modeling software, which means we can enter parameters and we can go back in time and change them and the design will update. For example, if I had this cube to be 10 millimeters, for example, and I went back to the sketch and changed it to 20, it would update. But user driven parameters are even more powerful than that because we can actually have a table of parameters we set. To understand it, I'll open that table. So under modify, we go down to the bottom here and change parameters. So when you're looking at parameters, you have user parameters and model parameters. Now model parameters are generated automatically as you draw your model with sketches and extrudes and various other uh, features. And by dropping it down, it'll actually show everything I've done in my sort of feature tree. So sketch, extrude, offset, pattern. But what I'm demonstrating in this video is how to use user parameters, which is where you actually create your own using a name, a unit and a value or expression. And I've found this to be extremely powerful. So as I said, I am no, by no means a crazy expert in using and changing parameters in Fusion 360, but this is how I've been using it. So this entire model we've got here, these, uh, these nine cubes have been designed with these parameters. So when you go to create a user parameter, you have various units you can define it in. So if I go to create a new one here, um, you can see under units, there is heaps of length units, and then you have angles, and then you have currency, current, luminosity, mass, percentage, I, I, uh, viscosity, I, I don't know, okay? I have never used any of those ones. I've only ever used length and then no units, which is important for later on for your pattern. But as an example to start with, use a perimeter, use a parameter, cube size, millimeter and 10. And I'll show you how I've used that. So I'll scroll back my feature tree all the way to the start to just a sketch right here. Okay. And I'll right click edit sketch. Now this is, as I've shown in my CAD for newbies videos, a very basic sketch, which I've done an extrude to, but you'll notice the dimension is not just 10 millimeters or 20 millimeters. It says FX equals 10. That is my user parameter. And instead of entering 10, which you very much could do, for example, 10, I've actually entered my parameter cube size. So I just hit C and it shows a suggestion of what parameters you might want to use. So cube size and then enter. Now it is very strange to enter a, a uh, label basically instead of a dimension, but that's just something it takes a bit of time to get used to. And it takes a bit of planning to figure out what you're going to be actually using and to make parameters for it. But then I've done an extrude to this sketch. And this is where the power of user driven parameters or user created parameters really comes into play. So if I go to here to show the extrude and right click edit feature, you notice that the distance that I've extruded is also cube size. Okay. Which means if we go back into our parameter table, so uh, create, sorry, modify, um, change parameters, and we change our cube size to 20, for example, both update the original sketch and the extrude. So you don't have to change two things and you know exactly what they are by just going to this table. That's how powerful user parameters are. And that's really what's allowed me to start designing models like this because they have multiple parts 
and they have multiple uh, uh, sort of dimensions that I might want to change later. And I don't want to go through every single piece and every single feature and change it. I can just change it once in my table. So I'm going to change it back to 10 here because that's the size I wanted. So next in the model, we have a bore. So just scrolling forwards, it's just a sketch and a hole. And similarly, under my table, my parameters, I have a hole size, which I've set here. So it's six millimeters. Okay. But uh, then I also wanted to demonstrate the angle parameter. So I've actually done a, an angle sketch here, which cuts through that bore at a certain angle. And I've established that at 15 degrees. So if I change that, for example, to, to maybe 30, it'll update from the point I've referenced it to in the sketch to 30 degrees. But uh, let's just change that back to, uh, let's make it 10. 10 degrees. So that's all well and good. You can use parameters that you've generated your own user parameters to enter dimensions for objects. And as you've seen, making a cube this way is very easy because you don't have to update each sketch and each feature. You can just do it once. But this next bit is really what made me love user parameters. And that is engineering in clearance for 3D prints. Because as I said, this has to have clearance to work. And I've started using parameters, my own user parameter, to enter that clearance because I need to tweak it as I tweak the model because 3D printers work differently. Sometimes some clearances are good, some are bad. They're not good enough or, they, or they're, they're, they're too close, etc. So how I've done that is like this. So here I have, right click. I've just done a uh, offset here. I've done a press pull offset, which is sort of like an extrude, except you just pull or, you just pull or push and the distance I've offset it is clearance. Okay, same with the outside of the shape here. So if I edit here, the entire cube, I've selected all faces. Actually, that one hasn't been selected, there you go. I actually even missed that. So all six faces have been selected and I've similarly entered clearance as the distance. And in my table, if I go here, clearance is set at 0 0.1 or it's minus 0 0.1 because that's going to be how much it's uh, offsetting from the face. And if you have a 3D printer that needs more clearance, for example, 0 0.3, it'll update. So you can imagine this being applied to an entire model where things inter interact with each other and you need to give it more clearance. You can just enter it once and not worry about missing it or having to do it like 50 times. <laughs> That is powerful. That is incredibly useful to me. So if you don't take anything else away from this video, consider using a user parameter for clearances when it comes to 3D printing. Okay, now the final way of using user parameters I wanna demonstrate in this video is with patterns. Now I've been using these a heap. And what's really cool about it is if I right click the pattern and edit the feature, you'll notice there is no dimensions to be seen. I'm actually using two user driven parameters to create this pattern. I've got a quantity, which I've called grid count, and I've got a distance, which is our original cube size, which is cube size. And um, because we put that clearance in originally, there is a gap between the parts. So if I say okay, and then go back to our parameters, and then change our grid count to six, it'll automatically update our pattern to six. And you notice that with units, grid count has no units because we're not creating a, uh, a six millimeter instance. Um, it, it gets, it freaks out about that. Uh, we're just creating six. It's got, there's no units attached to our pattern number. Um, and that took me a little while to figure out because it defaults to millimeters, but don't worry. It's easy, you just start a new one. So you use the parameters and make sure you enter no units if you're intending to use that parameter for a pattern or something along those lines. Uh, I will mention there is a small bug I've noticed with pattern uh, and parameters. If I, for example, enter 10 here uh, for the distance, that is the correct distance. But um, if I go back and I do want to enter um, the, the actual parameter, user-driven parameter as cube size, if it's the same as the original um, number, so because it is 10 in the table, it's also 10 at it's the same as what the number was and say, okay, it won't update for some reason. If I go back to edit feature, it just says 10 again. So to get around that, you need to go into your table and change it to something else like 20. Okay. Go back in, edit feature, 
now change it so cube size okay and then go back into your parameters and change it back to 10 and then it will actually update the pattern um, I don't know if uh, F Fusion's aware of that uh, glitch but basically if it's not updating with a user driven parameter then change the number so it's something different and then it will let you actually update it and like I teased at the start of this video, this is a 3x3 three three puzzle I've been working on and the mechanism has been really hard to get, um, you know, just, just the right amount of clearance with 3D printing. I'm still working on getting it perfect, but I've actually used a clearance parameter here on all the interlocking pieces to get that just right. Uh, so the expression here, if it, was, if it was too tight or too loose, I can change this one number. So for example, minus 0 0.5 for a very loose puzzle. And then everything will update. I've got heaps of different clearances I've already set. And then everything here in the uh, actual movement parts will update to give me those clearances. So look out for a video on that very shortly. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video useful. As I said, I'm still learning the inner workings of user parameters, but I've been using them all the time now for my more complicated puzzles. And look out for a video on this bad boy very soon. And if you want more details on how to design a print in place puzzle with multiple pieces like this one, you can see my video here uh, with the file, which I did an in-depth tutorial on Gumroad on how, to, how I actually designed it. And if you did enjoy this video, guys, I would love for you to subscribe. It is my aim to empower your creativity with technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.